Andre. Yes. Uh, you were in the last class, right? Yes. Yeah, I, I didn't, uh, you didn't, you got in there a little late, I think. Just make sure from now on, Leandre, Leon, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, am I pronouncing it cor correctly, Leandre? Yes, that's correct. You know, the only thing is just make sure, make sure that I get you uh, marked on for attendance, okay? Okay. Uh Ladies and gentlemen, I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. It took a half an hour to, to load that, uh, to connect that thing. I think it has to do with the fact that it's uh, a little extra long because of the, of the uh, uh, period uh, for the uh, office hours. So I think that's uh, what's going on there. I apologize for that. How are we doing? We have, did anybody sneak off for dinner? I made baked potato soup last night and I actually have leftover that I'm eating. There you go. Baked potato what? Loaded baked potato soup. Explain. I, I made it in a pressure cooker. I basically just made like the onions and bacons first and then cooked the potatoes and then just put the cream and everything in it to mix it together afterwards and cooked it for about 20 minutes. You like to cook? Yeah. Yeah, it's another passion. I'm mm. sorry, I lied. Three things, travel, dogs, or food. You can get me talking. What we did for, uh, for New Year's Eve, we did the Feast of the Seven Fishes. We had uh, like mussels, coconut shrimp. We had uh, a Creole shrimp. Uh, I, I did a six pound snapper on my green egg. Uh, I mean, I'm probably making everybody hungry at this point. Uh, so I love cooking. I'm sorry, who are you? Jennifer. Yep, Jennifer. Gotcha. Okay, Gaith, you here? I saw you in, Gaith. Yeah, hey, I'm here. Sorry, I'm, I'm still at work, Professor. So, but I'm still <laughs> trying to listen. So I, I yes, I apologize. I, I apologize to one and all. It just took a long time for that to download. I, I'm sorry. No uh, worries, no worries. Davila, Davila, I see you. Davila's here. Monica. Monica Cardenas. Terry. Terry, I'm come here. Back. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, Sophia. Sophia. Here, sir. Got you. Uh, Apple Grace is here. Hunter. See, I do pay attention. Sure. Hunter. Hunter is here. Leandre is here. Maverick. Yes. Maverick Haber. Maverick Haber. He, he just popped in. I, 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 yeah, I saw him pop in too, but I haven't heard him yet. Tyler. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, Aya? Yes. Did I say it right? Yes, you did. Amazing. Uh, Jen Jeffrey. No, it's not because of you, I. It's because of me. I'm horrible with names. Jeffrey. Here. Jeff? Yeah, okay. it's, it's, it, it made me sign in through my brother's. I'm sorry? It made me sign in through my brother's Zoom account. But it I don't is know Jeff. Why. Do you want to be called Jeff? Yeah, that's fine. Grace. Grace? Here. Here. Uh, Katie, Katie, Mateo. Yeah, here. Faith, I saw. Jennifer, I saw. Victoria. Victoria. Yep. Nope. Yep. Nope. Am I here? Nope. I don't I'm, know. Am I here? I. I don't know anymore, man. <laughs> it's it's that time of day, <laughs> Michael. It is that time of day, Michael. Here. Here, sir. Philip. Here, here. Got you. Here, yep. Miriam. I see Miriam. Here. Thank you, Miriam. And that's it. Let's see who I did not get. Uh, hundred percent. 
my name is Apple Grace. I, have I got no... you, Apple Grace. Okay. I okay. got you. Got you already. Okay. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen. You have the privilege of being taught to me, taught by me in this course for the first time. I have not taught this class, class online before. So it's going to be a bit interesting. We'll do fine. We're going to get through it. All right. I've taught Chem 1, Chem 2 online. I just haven't taught this course online. I've taught it many times in the past. All right. So first thing about the course that you need to know, you're not going to be doing actual experiments. What's going to happen? I Believe me, it pains me as much as it probably does you. It, it takes all the fun away from this. But what's going to happen is we're going to be either giving you videos or we're going to be giving you the data itself. Now, normally speaking, I am going to be spending about an hour lecturing. And with that hour lecturing, what you're going to get is you're going to get a little bit of the theory behind the experiment. And I'm going to take you through all the calculations that's involved with the experiment so that you are going to have a PowerPoint presentation leading you through the calculations of all the experiments. Are we good with that, guys? OK. Basically, the lab manual. The lab manual is provided for you. You do not have to buy anything. Are you seeing my screen, ladies and gentlemen? Michael, you see my screen? Got gotcha. you. Got gotcha, you. Right? Yes, sir. So if you want the lab manual, you go to course content. When you hit course content, you have a whole series of modules that you have to go through. Hey, I have a question. Yep. Um, so you're telling me they sold this to me for no reason, the uh, experiments for Chem 20, uh, 1025L. Um, so this thing, I don't need this. Uh, hold on one second, Hunter. All right. All right, you see what I did. You do not need it, Hunter. Hunter need his money back. That's what he needs. <laughs> Yeah, that's what yes. I mean. You do not need it. You can keep, you can, if you want a hard copy, it's there. Okay. Hunter, or Andrew, or, sorry. Hunter. Anything you want. How much, how much did it cost you? Um, I'm not exactly sure. I think it was a good amount though. Uh, I had the receipt in my bag somewhere, but um, I, I think, think you're gonna... covered it, but I'm still going to go back and return it. Andrew, I think you're going to find that buying it is cheaper than printing it out. Yeah, it shouldn't. I don't know. I, I got to look at the receipt. Look at Andrew. Look at the receipt. See if it's see if it is a an owner. So that, that that is going to be what we're that what we're going to be working off of, right? Yeah. Okay. It's the same thing. Okay. If you go to course content, that brings hops up this page. All right, go down to any of the experiments. In this particular case, I went to experiment two. Now look, first thing that's there, Chem and Physical Properties Lab. If you punch that in, this is it. Look at your book, Hunter. Look at your book, look at the first experiment and see if it's not the same thing. I don't want to. I really would rather not look at uh, okay. open, open. I don't want to open it because then I, you know what I mean? It might perfect returning it. So uh, no, no, that's fine. That's fine, Andrew. I perfectly understand. But it is in here. If you find that it I think you're going to find that it's cheaper than if you print this out yourself. Okay. Okay. Your choice. It's entirely your choice. But the each of the lab experiments are in there. You do not have to buy that. 
if you don't want to. This whole thing is exactly what is available in the bookstore. Any questions about that on how to access it or on uh, anything else about this particular thing? You are going to get there. You're going to go to the home page, which is right here. This is the home page. Go up to course content. After you hit course content, the modules will be populated. You go down to the individual experiment. In the individual experiment, the first the it first was fifteen dollars thirty cents, by the way. It was what? It was only fifteen thirty. I honestly, Andrew, I think you're gonna find that it's cheaper to do that than to print it out. But do whatever you yeah, like. Yeah, it's just fifteen bucks. It's fine. I'm just gonna keep this. I'll I'm gonna open it. So you go the first thing you're gonna see in the individual experiment will be the lab that you have to perform. Questions about that? On some of the experiments, what you're gonna find is you're gonna find a video. The video will actually take you right through and describe everything that's gonna happen. It will, the Dr. Musgrave who does the videos will actually go through and do the, the experiments step-by-step step with the videos. Now, I will get into the actual grading in a second or two, but that's basically what is happening with that. Questions about that so far? Hey, so help me understand. So basically we get the instructions, we get a video, and then that lab report is the part that we fill in to turn in? I, I'm gonna get it, Monica, I'll get into the grading in a second, okay? Okay, okay. But basically, you're correct in what you've said. Sometimes you will get a video and you're going to have to translate the information from the video. Like, for example, I'm fairly sure in the chemical and physical properties, there is going to be a lab, there are going to be lab videos there that you're going to have to watch for that particular experiment. On the other hand, you are going to have some some experiments like the titration, it may give you, it may give you data. Whichever it gives you, use that. Do we understand? If it gives you a video to watch, then watch the video. If you, if it gives you a series of data, then use the data. Questions about that so far? So I just wanted to give you an idea of what was going to be expected of you when you were doing with these laboratories. We are not going to deal with any chemicals this semester. Questions? I'm begging for questions here, guys. OK. What happens with the grading? That's the easiest way to break this down. In introduction, you have 14 experiments. You have 14 experiments. And the experiments are divided into three sections. There is a pre-lab, there is a result section, and there is a post-lab section. The pre-labs are worth 10 points. The results are worth 60 points. The post-labs are worth 30 points. Now, you need, before you get the experiment, before you do that, you need to read through the experiment. So, today is Tuesday. By next Monday, you need to read through the next experiment on our list, chemical and physical properties. You need to read through the experiment and you need to do the pre-lab 
before you do the experiment. The pre-lab is a quiz just to make sure that you are reading the experiment, to have you prepared to do the experiment. Do we understand that? Pre-labs are done by midnight, the day before the experiment is performed. The results section are going to deal with the actual experiment. The results section is going to be in a report. And that will be listed in the section as well. In this case, I'm calling up the titrations report. I'm going to go over here because I want, want to get some information on this. And I may be just backtracking on that for in a second. I'm sorry, the syllabus, I did not write the syllabus and the syllabus says something different from what is on the, uh, uh, what, is, what I'm seeing in the actual substance. I'm sorry about that guys. Let's do this. That'll be there. Okay. Sorry about this, guys. I'm playing along with you just as you're doing this. Pre-labs are worth. Ah. This is irritating to me because Sorry, I apologize to mess. Okay. What is written on the page is not exactly what's written. Okay. Erase everything that I said before. You have two points. You have a pre-lab and you have a report. Okay, guys? There's a pre-lab and a report. The pre-lab will consist of the questions that are asked before you do the experiment. They are going to be due the night before the experiment at midnight. They're worth one point. The actual report is going to be worth nine points. What the report is going to consist of is it's going to consist of calculations you use to finish the experiment. So there's calculations involved. And the other thing that is involved are some post lab questions. Now, the post lab questions are, those, are questions that deal with their number problems, they're I'm sorry, not number problems, they are word problems that deal with the theory of the experiment. 
So you have the pre-lab that deals with before the, you do the experiment that's due on the midnight before the experiment is performed. You'll do the pre-lab. You'll come in the next evening at 7, 15, 7 30. I will have a lecture. After the lecture, you can then deal with the uh, post with the report portion, which is worth nine points. There are there are 13 lab reports. 12 of the pre-labs will count. 12 of the reports will count. You get to drop one from each section. It does not have to be from the same experiment. Are we good with that, guys? Monica, you look like you're rubbing your head. Monica? Sorry, I was unmuting. Um, so you said you drop one for each for the pre-lab and did I get that right? Yes. Yes. Okay. There are 13 pre-labs you have to do. 12. And that's, and that was, and that was wrong in the syllabus too, right? Cause I think the syllabus no, said. I, I grabbed my fault. I grabbed the wrong syllabus. It is correct in the syllabus. It's my bad. Okay. The syllabus thought, is correct. The syllabus says it drops two pre-labs and one lab is what I read. Yep, you're right. You're correct, Monica. You're absolutely correct. Two of those are dropped. There are 11 points total there. One of the reports is dropped. Okay, cool. So we've got those reports are being graded. Also, you have a final exam. That's going to be worth 50 points. So you have 11 points from the pre-labs, you have 12 points, or nine times 12, which is 96 points from the reports. That adds up to about 108 points for the reports. Uh, there are 50 points for the lab practical and by next week, you have to perform a safety quiz, which is worth five points, five easy points. Grading 90, 80, 70, 60. I will go below, as low as an 87, depending upon class performance. I will not take that above 90%. So I know I've done a muss up job of this explanation. I just want to make sure that you are clear on that. Prelapse due night before the experiment. There are 13 of them. Two are dropped. So that counts for 11 points. There are 13 lab reports. The lab reports will be done on the Monday following when I give the lecture on the experiment. There are 12 of them. They each count nine points for 108 points. The lab final is worth 50 points. The safety quiz you'll hand in before Monday of next week is worth five points. Are there any questions on that? Yeah, so everything will always be due on Mondays? Yes. Okay. What you're going to do is things are going to stagger. The assignments that you have due, the assignments you have due by Monday midnight next week are the safety quiz and the pre-lab for chem and physical properties. That is the first experiment. Okay, so... By midnight, Martin Luther King Day, you have to have those two things submitted. Now, that second week, I am going to give a lecture on the Chem and Physical Properties Laboratory. So that on the 25th of January, you will complete the report for the Chem and Physical Properties Laboratory and you will submit the pre-lab for the next laboratory, which is 
the mass and volume measurements. So each Monday at midnight, you'll be submitting a pre-lab for the lab that I'm gonna lecture on the next day. And you will be submitting the report from the experiments that I lectured on the week before. Questions? What would be the best place to see these due dates every week? Would it be under the course calendar or like where in my courses would be the best place for us to like go every week or day to look like when the things syllabus. are due? The syllabus. The syllabus? Okay, great. If you Thanks. look at the very like end, very end of the syllabus. It should be on the calendar as well. Like they'll tell you what is due um, for any of your courses really. It should have it under my courses, what is due. That day. All right, cool. Thanks. If you click calendar and you go down here long enough, you see. If I click on the 18th, you see. I'm sorry, is this Philip? Yeah. Oh, all right, you asked the question. I clicked on the 18th. So you have the safety and syllabus quiz due and the common physical properties pre-lab do. So you can get it in the calendar. That's one awesome. place. The other place is the at the end of the syllabus. You have a schedule of when the experiments are going to be completed. Okay, Philip. Another thing is I will be getting, at least at the very start of the semester, I will be getting on the course and I will have an announcement. And in the announcement, I will tell you when things are due. Like for example, this is the homepage assignments first week, due January 18th at midnight, the safety quiz, Pre-lab for chem and physical properties lab. Enough notification, Philip? All right. Anybody have any questions on where to find the experiments, how much point value they're worth, or what you're actually doing in the experiments? Any questions in that regard? Um, I have a quick question. I'm here. Uh, when you say the pre -labs, This is Davila? Yeah. Okay, Davila. When you say the pre-labs are due the night before the experiments, I know we're not doing the experiments, so does it say a date when the experiment would happen or? Davila, okay. You have three places you can find that. The first place, you go to the calendar, okay? In the calendar, you see dots. Dots are when there are experiments. What you're gonna be doing, you specifically are gonna be looking at Mondays. Okay, Davila? You click on Monday. What happens is you get a screen off to the left. You click it all the way down to the very bottom. That tells you safety and syllabus quiz is due, chem and physical properties are due. All you got to do is hover over it and it will tell you the exact title. Okay, Davila? That's one place you can find it. Okay. Second place you can find it in the course home. There are announcements. First thing I'm going to do for each announcement for each week is to tell you what your assignments are. I will probably do the same thing in an email. I'll probably just highlight it and put it in an email as well. The third place you can find it is if you go to the course content, highlight syllabus, the syllabus will pop up. Then you go to the very bottom. The very bottom is the schedule. This is what we're doing this week. We're getting, I'm orienting you and I'm giving you safety rules, okay? Whatever experiment you're doing this week, 
That report is due the next week. And whatever experiment you're doing the next week, you have to do the pre-lab. Davila, does that make sense to you? Yes, thank you. Any other questions, guys? Anything? Yes, I had one. Who's talking? Hunter. Spencer. Hunter. That's it. Hunter. I'm sorry, Hunter. What you got? Um, so can we just like real fast, because I know um, this might be annoying, but the uh, can we just go down the, the points on the actual grades? I know we have the reports, the safety quiz, which is five. We have the pre-labs, the lab reports, and the lab final. Is there any other things that there are you great? go, Hunter. There you go, all right? Okay, and then just the point ratio, like how much are the uh, reports? The report, all right, you've got a total of, there are a total of 174 points. Okay. Okay, Hunter. Okay. The actual reports are worth 108 out of that 174. Okay. Pre-labs are worth 11 out of the 174. Lab practical is worth 50 out of it. That safety quiz is worth five out of it. And you said lab practical? Yes, it's their final exam. Okay, that's the final, okay. Yes. And that's, you said 50 points, okay. 50 points. Thank you. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? I'm here for you. So, um... My schedule says that this class ends at 9.45. How often is that going to actually run to that time? <laughs> Never. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Sophia, if this were an actual lab class, mm -hmm. even if this were an actual lab class, when you are doing the experiment mm -hmm. and you're expending time to do that, mm -hmm. I've got, there are maybe, maybe one or two of the experiments that last to the end of the period. And even then I get people streaming out early. This is not gonna be the same case in Chem 1, but in intro lab, you generally get out early. All so right, basically, basically what's gonna happen is the only thing you're here for is for me talking, okay? okay. And it'll take me about an hour to go through the description of things, okay? All right. Thank Fair you, enough, sir. Sophia. Yes, sir. Thank you. Anything else, ladies and gentlemen? I'm going to pop real quick and look to make sure that I'm not missing anything. Read through the syllabus. Guys, if you do have a disability, first of all, the, your advisor in the student disability office needs to email that to me. And secondly, please remind me a week before the final that you need extra time, okay? If you have the disability, please remind me because I'm not gonna necessarily remember. It's just a courtesy to me. Uh, That's basically it for the syllabus. Any questions thereof? We uh, need to let you know in advance if we're gonna be absent or it's like something comes up and we can't. If you're not here, you don't get to turn in the, the report. You can turn in the pre-lab, but you can't turn in the report. Okay. You need to be present. Any other questions, guys? Okay, this is rather stupid, what I have to do, but I have to do it because you have a safety quiz, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop sharing here and I'm going to start a PowerPoint. Nope, I'm not gonna do that, nope. I wanna do this. Maybe I do. Uh, PowerPoint.
blank presentation. Yay. Basically, any safety I instruction I give must be complied with. Any regulations that conflict with it refer back to rule number one. You need goggles. Goggles and a lab coat must be worn. Okay, gloves are mandatory. Shoes must cover the entire foot. No sandals, Crocs, or open-toed stilettos are allowed in the laboratory. Tops must cover the entire torso. So guys, you're not allowed to wear midriffs or you're not allowed to wear wife beater shirts when you come to lab. Everybody know what a wife beater shirt is? Tank top. Thank you. Long pants must go to the ankles. Bottom line, guys, when you're in a chemistry lab, you want a layer of clothing, you want a layer of clothing between you and the chemicals. Don't wear synthetic fibers. Has anybody ever been taking off their nail polish while wearing a pair of nylons? Philip, have you ever done that? Surprisingly, I have not, actually. Uh, Hunter? No, I've never done that. Sorry. Seriously, any, any of the ladies, have you ever tried doing that, taking nail polish off while you have nylons on? Don't do it. Nail polish remover is acetone. It's an organic solvent. What happens when the acetone gets on the nylon is it goes and it dissolves the nylon. So your nylons will get ruined. Synthetic. When you're in a lab, you generally want to wear cotton. A green little chemist on a green little day, mix some green little chemicals in a green little way. <sighs> now the green little grasses do tenderly wave or the green little chemist, green little grave. Ladies and gentlemen, we will have no green little chemists. Don't mix chemicals unless authorized. Don't have any horseplay, respect the dangers that are inherent in a lab. Ladies and gentlemen, if you go on and if there is a face-to-face -face lab in the summer or in the fall. Realize this, if you wear contact lenses, you are not allowed to wear them in the lab. 
I had a very good friend when I was in high school that got some organic solvent sprayed in his eyes. And he nearly had his soft contact lenses fused to his corneas. There's a very, very good reason why you don't wear contact lenses in a chem lab. By the same token, what are the chances I'm gonna be able to tell if you're wearing contact lenses? Idea is, safety-wise, this is a no-brainer. Every lab has a shower. If chemicals are spilled on you, go underneath the shower. for 15 to 20 minutes. Better yet, if you get chemicals ever spilled on you, rip all your clothing off. Go underneath the shower and pull it down. Your modesty will not save your life. This may. Anything in your eyes. Use the eye wash, 15 to 20 minutes. Amazingly, amazingly enough, guys, I'm allergic to ethyl acetate. How many of you like the smell of nail polish? The chemical that makes nail polish liquidy is something called ethyl acetate. I had to use that solvent. I literally had to use gallons of it at a time. And for three months, about every third week, I was, I was in the emergency room having my eyes flushed out. I was wearing goggles, but the fumes from the chemicals got in there. So don't assume that just because you're wearing goggles, you can't get anything in your eyes. Sophia, are you bored yet? I'm bored and I'm giving this silly ass speech. Sorry, sir, I was on mute. <laughs> okay. Um, no, where the safety equipment is. Fire extinguishers. Power and fire extinguisher power and first aid kit. Know where the exits are. Never run into a room with chemicals. when there is a fire. No eating, drinking, applying makeup or Smoking. I'm trying to make you healthy. Turn off equipment when not in use. Everything, keep aisles free. Mm. 
think that's 17, isn't it? Nope, that was 16. Recap chemicals. If you spill anything, if you break anything, or if you set your partner on fire, let me know. Okay, guys, I got to tell you a story. Anybody like to cook? Somebody, somebody put their hands up. Yes. Sophia? Yeah. All right. Yep. Anybody know how to make beef bourguignon? No. I'm vegan. No. Nobody beef bourguignon. Yeah. Oh, God. If you, have you ever eaten beef bourguignon? Yes. Yes. Oh, it's delicious. No. Absolutely. Well, one of the first steps, you got to take the beef, you got to take it, and you got to put it into a bag full of flour, and you shake it all around. You get all that flour all along the beef. And then you take it, you put it in a pan, and you saute it up, you brown it up real, 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 real nice. Then what they tell you to do is they tell you to pour a cup of cognac on it and light it. Now, who's watched cooking shows? How do they light things in cooking shows? And alcohol. Well, yeah, yeah that's yeah. the cognac. They don't take a lighter and put a lighter. What they do is they take the pan, they turn the pan over, the alcohol flames meet the, meet the flames of the gas burner and it all starts to light up, right? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, I got this. I got this, no problem. What they don't tell you is you're not supposed to boil the cognac for five minutes before you try it. I did this and whoosh. I'm looking left, I'm looking right. My wife's a choir. I'm thinking, ah, nobody, no, nobody saw me. I'm golden. The dog is not talking. <gasps> I set my bangs on fire. My, my hair. Did you singe? Did you singe hair. your eyebrows off? No, I didn't singe. I Lucky. set my bang. I had a nice triangle cut out of my bangs. So, in the meantime. I'm thinking there's no way in the world I'm getting away with it. What I'm doing to illustrate this is, guys, if you're in a chemistry lab, tie your hair back. I can't tell you how many times I see you guys get really interested in something and you lean over and I see the hair come very, very close to the Bunsen burner. Tie your, your, tie your hair back. I have a question about if so if that inches if that happened to you like it did and there was like a fire I've heard to pour milk on it instead of water I have to make bananas foster at work so I have to light a bunch of alcohol on fire and we've always been told to pour milk on it instead of water if a fire you know, breaks out can I can I let you in on a seat who am I Katie Katie can I let you in on a secret Katie Sure. I once held a record for the most flaming shots at Theta Chi fraternity at West Virginia University. Lovely. I did 21 oh shots in a night. <laughs> All right. You when remember? you light alcohol, it does not, it goes out, it burns the alcohol before it really burns your face. Okay. So mm -hmm. there's not really that much danger with it. So you don't need to be that much worried about it. If you see it on you and you see the blue flames, yeah, get a wet towel and tap and tap it up. Milk, it's liquid. It's going to put out the flames. I don't see any advantage over that or over anything else. Okay. Okay. Uh, wash your hands. After lab, 
Gentlemen, I bring this to your attention in particular. When you're in Chem 1 and when you're working with chemicals, you're going to be there for two hours or more. There are certain body functions that you're going to want to relieve. If you have not washed your hands, you will touch a delicate portion of your anatomy and be immediately warned as to why you should have washed your hands. Please, at the end of the laboratories, wash your hands. Be aware of the chemicals. Don't put flammables next to the Bunsen burner. Don't aim. Aim a test tube at anybody. It might be loaded. Keep your hands away from your hands and face. Keep your hands away from your face. Be aware, guys, if you are pregnant, let the instructor know there are chemicals in this lab that will go directly through the uterine wall into the fetus, especially water-soluble lead. There's one experiment that uses water-soluble lead. So if you're pregnant, let the instructor know because there could be something, some chemicals within that semester that you need to make sure that you don't touch. As a matter of fact, I don't let uh, pregnant people do that particular experiment. Recommendations, guys, be sensible. Don't wear Arma Armani suits to the lab. Don't wear stiletto heels. Don't wear your good dancing shoes to the lab. Don't wear any loose clothing. It may propagate. Guys, the jokes do not get any better than that. That's pretty much about the safety lecture. There is a safety quiz. There is a safety video. I would strongly urge that you look at the safety video before you take the safety quiz because there may be some things in there that I've missed. Safety quiz, worth five points. I believe you can take that multiple times. Get the best score you can, guys. It's five easy points. Any questions? Okay, so just to be clear, um, in this chemistry lab, the safety and syllabus quiz is due on the 18th. The chemical and physical properties pre-lab report is the 25th. No, the no. no. Chem, and, chem and physical properties is due the 18th. Okay. Um, let me scratch that out. One, Hunt, eight, Hunter, they, they stagger. What, oh, you're, what, yeah, yeah. what you did last week is going to be the report for the next week, and then you will have the pre-lab for the next experiment. Do you understand the staggering okay. process? So, all right. And then, okay, so then that report and then the lab will be on the next one. Hunter, I don't think you're getting it. All right. Yeah, can you explain it to me again? I'm sorry. No, it's no problem. All right. Let's look first week. If you want to pull up the, the syllabus, that might help you. This week, we discussed safety. Okay, Hunter? Hunter, I think I'm at... Oh. Okay. All right, this week, January 12th, we discussed safety. 
So look at that safety as being like the report that you have to hand in on next Monday at midnight. Okay. The experiment that is due on the 19th is chemical and physical properties. So you had to do the lab from the previous experiment. So that report is due on the 18th. The safety is due on the 18th and the pre-lab for chem and physical properties. Now, the week after that, which is the 26th, is the lab period that we have. On the 25th, you will have to turn in the chemical and physical properties report, as well as the pre-lab for the next experiment, which is mass and volume measurements. Is that kind okay. of making sense now? That, okay, that makes complete sense, okay. Guys, any other questions? I apologize for the my unpreparedness tonight. My only excuse is that I've done this lab for eight years now, and I thought that I could just do it off the top of my head. That it's explains okay. the problems in the in initially, plus so the, the fact plus the fact that I grabbed the wrong syllabus. Okay, so the mass and the volume, the actual report will be due on the next period, which is what day? February first. It'll be after February first. Okay, thank you. And I have a question. The pre lab for density is going to be doing February first. Who is who's asking the question? Monica. Hi, Monica. So we're going to meet every Tuesday, right? Every Tuesday. Every Tuesday, 7.15 to 7.30. That's okay, all so going to be dependent upon when my recording gets converted because I teach lecture right before this class. Mm. What I, what's happens is if I don't let the recording completely convert, I lose the recording for my lecture. Does that make sense to you? So I have to get that completely converted. Today, I was a little late getting out of lecture, which explains why it took, a, well, the half an hour, it probably will take about all the time, but normally I get out of lecture at, at 6.45 for the half hour. That's why I'm meeting at 7.15. Does that make sense, Monica? So if we could use your Tuesday meeting as the anchor. So basically before we meet, we have to do the pre-lab. After we meet, we'll do the experiment and the lab report. Correct. Okay. Okay. Got it. Anything else, guys? Are we going to be meeting uh, consistently at 7.15 or? 7.15 to 7.30. Okie dokie. Uh, Tyler, I, I, as I explained, I need, I, I teach lecture right before this. Oh yeah, I got that. Yeah, you gotta let the recording convert. I absolutely understand, yeah. I was just wondering if, if there's like a solid time we should shoot for it, but seven, that, that works, just curious. It's, it's going to be around that time. I'm gonna shoot for 7.15 because right now I have a hell of a headache, which is uh, because I haven't eaten today. So I wanna get out and eat myself, so. Yeah, I hear you. Anything else, guys? We're going to get through this. It's not going to be that much of a trout. I have a history, guys, of getting 90% of the people that start the class, I get them through the final. To give you an idea of the grades I hand out, Okay, my SPC 2045, last semester, 10 A's, 8 B's, 7 C's, 9 F's. That's because a lot of people stayed, they dropped the class but didn't withdraw. That explains that. Uh, my intro lab, HCC, 5 A's, 4 B's, 3 C's of the people that got through. Uh, another intro left, seven A's, eight B's, two D's, two F's. 
Another inch will add four A's, nine B's, six C's, one D, six F's. I hope you can see that they're heavily weighted on the higher end of the scale. I'm not a grade miser. If you just do, here's a life lesson for you. Do what the professor asks, you're going to get a good grade. I can't put it any more succinctly than that. Any more questions, guys? And looky here, it's just an hour, right? I got you out of here in an hour. That's generally the way it'll be for most, most periods, okay? If you have questions, those of you that do not have me for lecture, especially, if you have questions about lecture theory, please ask me. I'll be happy to, I will be happy to stay after class and talk to you about it. I'm a resource, guys. The other thing is, I do have office hours. My office hours begin immediately at the close of the lab lecture. It's, and basically, I'll continue the Zoom meeting from that point on. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? We'll get through this. We will get through this, all right? We're going to have fun, too. Hopefully, my lectures aren't going to be as dry as this. If there are, come out and shoot me. I need to be put out of my misery. Hey, if you think it was bad listening to it, I had to say it. <laughs> okay, if that's it, guys, I'm going to eat. Anybody All need right. to talk to me after class? If you do... Good dinner. <laughs> If you do need to talk to me, just stay on. I'll wait until everybody signs out before I end the meeting, okay? For what it's worth, this will be converted and saved, okay? All righty. Thanks, Professor. Take care. Thanks, Sorry. sir. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Have a good night. Good Thank night. Thank you. Bye. So Bye. Long. Farewell. Yeah. Auf Wiedersehen. Hey, Professor, quick question. Yep. Um, is this so, Michael? Yes, this is Michael. Um, for, I have another chemistry class I'm taking, so you're saying I could ask you questions based on that classroom? Sure. Lecture? Yeah. yeah. Lecture? Who do you have for lecture? Um, I'm not sure the name. I don't know if I could uh, leave Dr. This. Warden? Dr. Warden? Where, where are you taking it at? Uh, tar I'm, I'm just doing it online. But where is it based out of? Tarvin Springs? Tarp. Uh, I'm not sure. I could. I could ask you. I could tell you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. I was just trying to. I was just trying to get an idea. Sure. Absolutely, Michael. If you're running into problems, uh -huh. please ask me. I'll be happy to uh, uh, go through it with you. Okay. That's okay. I interrupt the classroom for a question like that. I would rather you didn't. I would rather you wait until the office hours, which begin after the class. Is that fine? Yeah, sure. You also have these moments after class if we end early. No, Michael, I, I, I will end early. Literally speaking, oh, okay. my normal. lectures will not be longer than an hour. Okay. And my office hours are going to begin after that time. So I'm, I'm just asking you to refrain from asking anything like that. During the class period. During the class period, because I want to keep everybody focused on the experiment. After that, I don't mind. All right. Thank you. I appreciate no it. No problem. Uh, I think we got Maverick. Uh, Maverick yeah. and Gate. Yeah, it looks like Gate. Maverick not hanging in there no more. Is he sleeping? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's out like a light. Look at this. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, he'll wake up eventually. <laughs> <laughs> Have a good dinner, Professor. Thank you. Oh, what I wouldn't do for a pot of warm water right now. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Have a good night. Have a good night. I actually wish I could take a picture of this. This is my <laughs> enthralled classwork. Why not? We'll leave it for the take care, Michael. You too. Sorry, I'm trying to look for your phonetical pronouncing. Gate. Gate.
Are you there, Dave? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, having one out cold person and one person is not responding, I am going to end this meeting. And meeting.